I greet you all in the name of Yeshua Messiah, Jesus Christ. It is the 28th of April, uh, 2023. It's almost 9 o'clock in the evening here in South Africa. We come to the end of um, the first Sabbath day, <coughs> in the first month of the new year, uh, based on the Aries calendar, SMS Aries calendar, which I believe to be the true calendar. Uh, let me just show you what. So on the SMS uh, Aries calendar, we begin. We we started our new year on the twenty first of April. So that was just after the uh, eclipse, the hybrid solar eclipse that we had. So New Year's Day be falling on, and of course, New Moon Day on the twenty first of April. And so we've now reached, we've come to the 8th day, well we've, we've just completed the 8th day and uh, the first Sabbath of the month. So on Sunday we'll have the 10th day of the first month, what I believe to be the true 10th day of the of the first month and uh, triumphal entry day, the day that Jesus entered into Jerusalem. And so we coming very close not too long just a couple of days to Passover to what I believe will be true Passover on the 4th of May with Resurrection Day occurring on the 6th of May <coughs> 2023 a big day I do believe and time will tell whether this is uh, all true and correct in terms of the understanding if you want to understand the true biblical calendar um, I'd highly recommend that you read through a study that I put together a little while ago. It's a 21 page study and it's called Unscrambling the Calendars and it explains in a fair amount of detail how I came to understand what I believe to be the true biblical calendar, um, how it works and uh, with, with a clear uh, description of um, where uh, the uh, scriptural references etc both in the apocryphas and and in the uh, our biblical canon so that uh, <coughs> that that'll give you a very clear understanding of why i believe this calendar to be the true biblical calendar today we're going to carry on with book romans of uh, the biblical uh, chronology or the romance of Bible chronology, I prefer to call it Biblical chronology. <laughs> um, this is a really a, 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 a walkthrough. Uh, Anstey's, uh, Mar Reverend Martin Anstey's uh, book written in, uh, or published in 1913, uh, 110 years ago, wherein uh, he he determined a, a chronology, a complete chronology, all the way from Adam all the way to Jesus Christ, the de uh, his, his baptism, crucifixion and birth, of course, uh, complete, using exclusively the Old Testament uh, and, and in some cases verification in the New Testament. It's an absolute brilliant piece of work. I'm absolutely astonished that the church has not picked up on this and used it as a it, it is a solid base it, it gives us a detailed account of every main event we would know we know from biblical uh, record exactly when the flood occurred we know exactly when adam was uh, abraham was born we know exactly uh, when each of the the, the patriarchs were, were, were born uh, when the uh, Israelites went into Egypt when they came out every bit of detail all the way through including all the kings all the judges all that time time period is clearly detailed uh, in some instances there are some places where we do need to do a little bit of work it's not all plain sailing one has to un uh, decipher and, and, do, and calculate based on the information that's provided. But there's always enough information provided to be able to determine the complete chronology. So this will be part two 
uh, of a video that I did a few weeks ago. Um, if you want to have a look, I would highly recommend you first watch the Romance and Biblical Chronology Part 1. Um, it's in this uh, uh, video that I really just give an introduction uh, into the book. And we cover the first part of the chronology from from Adam to to the to the birth of Shem. Uh, that that is really a foundation video you need to watch uh, before watching this one. This one we're going to continue on from where we left off in part one. And there's some really exciting uh, pieces of information that we're going to come across. Some really exciting stuff that we can derive. Uh, from the biblical chronology that's set before us if we spend the time to actually investigate it and just to, to seek it out so getting right to it we we, we finished up last uh, in the last video with the period uh, over here chapter 5 the Noah Shem connection that's where we pretty much ended up and, and I'll just recap a little bit we, we saw that there were uh, there were at least five there were five gaps or chasms uh, in time which we where we need to that need to be bridged where we need to uh, determine the connection we need to derive uh, 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 we need to unscramble the connection if you want um, to be able to complete uh, the chronology the first one was uh, which we dealt with right at the end of last video, the Noah Shem connection. In other words, the age at which uh, Sh uh, Noah was when Shem was born. It's not given to us uh, in plain uh, fashion like most of the other patriarchs. Uh, their births were given in fairly plain. The father's age was given, and uh, so we, we, it's a fairly straightforward reading. But in this case, we had to go and determine it based on the scripture that's given to us. There's a, the, and the next one, which we're going to deal with in this video, is, is, is the terror abraham connection. And in other words, the age at which terror was when Abraham was born. Um, and it's not 70, as most uh, Christians and teacher, uh, teachers within the church uh, believe. Then the next one which we're also going to deal with in this video is the connection between Joseph and Moses. In other words, the the time period between Joseph's death and Moses' birth. That's not given to us in plain text. And again, we need to unscramble it and, and, and discover it. And then there's another two later on which we'll deal in the next part. And that's between Joshua and Judges connection and then the Eli Saul connection. And then finally, there's the, the, the connection, the, the Daniel 70 weeks, the 490 years connection um, that would take us from the end of the 70 years of exile through to the baptism, crucifixion, and of course, the birth of the birth date. We can determine exactly which year Jesus was born in. We can determine exactly which year he was baptized in and exactly which year without any debate which year he was crucified in based on biblical chronology if you're willing to accept it okay so just a quick review we saw that um, in the case of uh, Shem we were shown that there were two possible ways to derive his uh, the, the age at which Noah was when, when he was born and uh, that's I just read uh, the, this first section in the last video, the the, the uh, which was the connection from Genesis um, eleven ten. We learned that Shem was a hundred years old, two years after the flood. So in other words, he was ninety eight years old at the time of the flood, and we know that uh, Noah was six hundred years at the time of the flood. So therefore, Shem was born when Noah was five hundred and two years old. Uh, there's there's another way we can also do there's two alternative ways to determine his age and we're going to look into that right now um, so f f from a, using a mathematical deduction the first way uh, that we've is is um, from our already already determined 
uh, a chronology. We know that Noah was, was born at, in the year 1056 after Adam. So Enhom is from Adam. Not from creation, from Adam. We, we know from biblical chronology gives us all the information from Adam. So 1056 from Adam, Noah was born. And we know that, uh, that the age of Noah at the birth of Shem was based on Genesis 7, 6 and with, together with Genesis 11, 10 was 205 and that's the part that we've just calculated now. Okay, So we add the 205 to that and we get to Shem being born in 1558. Uh, we know that Shem was a hundred years old when his son uh, Alphaxad was born and that we get from Genesis um, 7, 6 together with Genesis 11.10. So therefore, if we add a hundred years from when Shem was born, we know that of his son of Aksad was born in 1658 and home. The alternative method to determining that date of when Shem's son was born is to go back to um, using the flood. We know that the flood the flood is, is kind of can be viewed as a, as a, as a proxy person. Okay, so when we say that Noah was age 600 at the flood, um, that was at the beginning of the flood, we know that uh, we can take his, his age, of, uh, the year in which he was born, we can add the 600, so we know that the flood was one six, in the year 1656 and home. We know that two years after the flood from Genesis 11.10, is when Arfax, uh, uh, Hashem's son, Arfaxad, was born. So we can add two years to the uh, to the date of the flood, and we can arrive at the date that he was born at 1658. Exactly the same number. So those are two alternative ways to re to determining the birth of um, Arfaxad, uh, Hashem's son. From here, we'll, we will go on and we'll, we'll be able to complete the next stage of the biblical chronology f uh, through to the birth of Abraham and ultimately his, uh, his son Isaac and then Jacob uh, through to Joseph. So that's what we're going to go work on now. And Steve, for some other reason, he, he got into this another area uh, which was not directly related to biblical chronology, but it is, well, it's, it is in a way related, but uh, it, it, it is slightly diverting, a side issue really. He gets into some debate about what the calendar uh, probably looked like. Um, although it's not entirely his work, he's based this on, on uh, what Kennedy, a guy by the name of Kennedy did. Uh, put this work together and they, they came to certain conclusions with regards to what the calendar probably looked like in, in Noah's day based on the the one year story of the flood and the counts that are given the number of days between certain events and dates are given so we're given number of days and dates and then they come to a conclusion in a nutshell that the calendar must have been a uh, 11 months of 30 days each and in the 12th month it was either 24 or 25 days uh, to to bring to a total of 365 day month so uh, I don't agree at all with that uh, um, understanding and uh, I, so if you want to I'm going to leave this to to the viewer to decide if they want to go in into into detail and read up on it um, I'm not going to cover that in any any detail at all. So that's on the on the calendars, and it goes into a fair amount of detail. It was John Kennedy that put it together. Okay, so I don't I'm, I'm not in agreement with with their conclusion. So I'm going to move right on uh, to the next uh, to the actual. Um, oh, the, uh, also uh, uh, the. Uh, uh, um, Reverend Martin Anstey also goes into just after the chapter of dealing with each section, each uh, stage of the chronology, he goes into uh, a fair amount of detail comparing other sources uh, of uh, chronological data. And he compares that to the information that we derive from the biblical canon. Um, in this chapter, he, he goes into the numbers that we can derive from this, uh, the Septuagint 
the Greek text that that would be the Greek, the 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 Greek text the, the, that was translated from the original Hebrew about 300 years or so, 250 years before Christ. And then there's also a Samaritan Pentateuch that also provides some chronological information. And he goes into some detail on the differences, and there are some vast differences. I mean, there's just this table alone, uh, we, where the um, the flood date is arrived at from a biblical chronology. The Hebrew text is 1,656 years uh, to the flood, and the Septuagint comes to a ridiculous 2,242 years, or alternatively 2,262 years. There's a 20-year discrepancy in some of the copies. And then, of course, there's uh, the Samaritan is a shorter period of time by a couple of, uh, what, almost 350 years, uh, where they say that the flood occurred a little bit earlier. So uh, he goes into a fair amount of detail why we can uh, safely disregard the chronological information in these pieces of script. And uh, so if you want to read through that, it actually makes for some interesting reading. Uh, but I'm going to move right on to the the next phase is really looking at now from Shem. We now that we know when the age of Noah, when Shem was born, we can now move on to the the chronology that will take us through to the birth year of of Abraham. This is a very important section because this is a part where most people have I've been led down the garden path in terms of when Abraham was actually born, and what and I can see and I can see where why people have made this error, and it's only with uh, with careful study that one can find that there's additional information in the Bible that would lead us to the true understanding. Okay, so what we've got here is uh, we had 10 uh, patriarchs pre-flood, a list of 10 people before the flood, and then after the flood we've got another list of 10 people that gives us a chronology. So, and the, the information, in uh, the, the method of providing the information before the flood and after the flood is very similar except uh, when it comes later on we will see it changes a bit uh, quite dramatically f after Abraham after we've got Abraham's birth the method that is given is a lot more uh, not so uh, uh, it's not presented to us in, in such a straightforward way we have to do a lot more lot more digging so the first section we're just going to cover now from Shem to to Abraham um, and in those, in, in this is fairly straightforward. All the information is really provided for us quite compactly in Genesis 11. Um, so, in fact, I'm just going to jump to Genesis 11 just to show you how compact it really is. Um, okay, there it is. So Genesis from uh, Genesis 11 from 10 to 26. There's all the information giving us um, exactly. Uh, so we're told, I'll just read a little bit, the, 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 these are the generations from Shem. Shem was 100 years old and begat Ophaxad um, two years after the flood. Okay, and then he lived uh, 500 years. Um, and he begat other sons and daughters. So, so let's just co concentrate on the important information. Ophaxad lived 5 and 30 years, so he was 35 and he begat Salah. And Salah lived 30 years and he begat Eber. And Eber lived 40, uh, 4 and 30 years and he begat um, Peleg. And Peleg lived uh, uh, 30 years and begat Ru. And so it goes on, it's very straightforward until we get to the end here of the last one when he says uh, we, uh, we've got, well, let's just read from Genesis 11 24. We have Nahor lived 9 and 20 years and begat Terah. Now we must be careful. There's two Nahors. Okay, there's Nahor, the father of Terah, and Terah named one of his three sons Nahor. So there's two Nahors very close in succession to one another. This is the grandfather uh, of Abraham, uh, not the brother of Nahor, because Abraham's got a brother called Nahor and he's got a grandfather called Nahor. So we've got the f this is the grandfather. He, he was nine and twenty years old, and he begat Terah, and then and um, Terah lived seventy years. And begat Abraham, Nahor, and Haran. So, yeah, we got for the first time in this whole list where a person is, uh, where one of the, where the father is told, where we're told that the father begat three, you know, more than one person. And, and I can see that why the church and most Christians come to the conclusion that, well, 
uh, Terah was 70 years when Abraham was born. Abraham is listed first, and they assume that he's the oldest. Um, and that's all those assumptions are incorrect. Because later on, we're provided with the information that we need to determine exactly when, uh, exactly how old Terah actually was when Abraham was born. So in other words, this really is written that Terah was 70 years when he began to beget his three sons. It doesn't give, the, give it in the correct order. But Abraham certainly wasn't the oldest. He certainly wasn't the first. So based on that information, we can, we can, we'll come to what the church believes is that uh, uh, Terah was 70 years old and, uh, and, they, uh, and they determine his age uh, or the year in which he was and then they add 70 years uh, to that. And they and they 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 come to the conclusion that Abraham was born in nineteen in the year one thousand nine hundred forty eight from uh, from Adam, which is completely wrong, uh, and it's led to a lot of uh, misunderstanding and confusion down the road. So, the, so that's the biblical. So if we just go back to what Anstey has really done. Okay. So what Anstey's done here. So he's picked up from Shem, okay, so we had Shem, the flight, and then he added the two years uh, to the birth of his, his son, Arphaxad. Uh, then we got all the information, added on 35 years for uh, to, to, the, to, to the birth of Salah, and then another 30 years to the birth of Ebna, and another 34 years to the birth of Peleg, and all of that is straightforward. Um, and then, of course, we get to here, uh, Terra was born in 1878. And suddenly, uh, Anstey doesn't add 70 years, he adds 130 years because he was smart enough to find out that there's more information provided for us in Genesis 11:26 to 32 and 12 and 4 and Acts and confirmed in the New Testament in, in Acts 7, 4, then in fact, Abram, or Abram, at, before he was renamed, uh, was 75 when his father, Terah, was 205. So 205 minus 75 would mean that Terah was 130 years old when Abraham Abra Abra was born. So if you add 130, means that Abraham was actually born 2008 and Ham, so from Adam, as opposed to what the church typically teaches, that he was born 1948. Okay, the 1948 is a nice number because it looks like the 1948 in which Israel regained the land in 1948. And they make a connection there. And even recently, there was a connection to 2023 using the, a similar methodology. Um, so, uh, but we'll touch on that maybe a little bit later. All right, so this is, this is, this is a common error that's made and this discovery uh, must be... It was, it was uh, Usher, uh, Reverend Usher, I think, that discovered it. Uh, and I think I've got a note of it somewhere here. Yeah. Archbishop, sorry, Archbishop Usher. Actually, so the credit of the discovery of Tehran at the birth, age of Tehran at the birth of Abram was due to Archbishop Usher and the work that he's done. Okay, I'm dumping a little bit ahead, so let's just go back. So this is the confirmation um, in the text in Genesis 11.26. We read that Terah was 70 years and he begat Abraham, Noah, and Aran. That's all three sons, not necessarily in that order and definitely not in all in that year. We have to now show that in like manner, Abraham, though mentioned first, is not the... the okay, so he, he mentions here that Chem wasn't the oldest son and we've, we've already spoke about that in the previous video. But in similar fashion... Um, Abraham wasn't the oldest son um, of Terah and that he was born 60 years after his father turned 70. You know, that's when he was hundred. So that is given to us in the information. I just want to jump. Okay, the the important thing here is to be able to read the text correctly. And, I, and what, he, what he's explaining here is that because of the way the text was actually split up, and the manner in which it was translated in some translations, it created some confusion. So we get here, so after we're given that chronology, uh, we know that the first call where um, 
uh, Abram was called out of Ur and they went and lived in, in uh, Haran. They were called out of Ur and they went and lived in um, Haran. And uh, so Terah, his father with his, with his three sons and, and, and their families and all, they went, they went and lived uh, in a place called Haran. And it was at the uh, and the days of Terah were two two hundred and five years, and Terah died in Haran. Now, this is this doesn't stop here. You've got to continue reading in chapter twelve because chapter twelve actually links. Now the Lord said to Abraham, "Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, unto a land that I will show thee." Now this is this getting out of the land is not from Ur. This is getting out of Haran. And this instruction was given by, the, given by the Lord to Abraham when his father died at 205 and we are told that Abraham was 75 at that point in time. I think it was, uh, let me just see if it is, is it here. Mm. I think it's actually in 12. Uh, yeah. Okay, so it's just a little bit further. So let's just read here. So what we so so now the Lord had said unto Abraham, uh, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, unto a land that I will show thee, and I will make thee of thee a great nation. I will bless thee, and make thy name great, and thou sh and thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee, and curse him that curseth thee. And in thee all families of the earth will be blessed. So this was a promise that he gave to him. He called him. This is the second call. This is after having been called out of Ur. He's now been called out of Haran to Canaan, the land of Canaan, which is later becomes the land of the promised land. Okay. So Abraham departed in obedience. He departed as the Lord had spoken to him, and, and Lot went together with him. And Abraham was seventy and five years old when he departed out of Haran. So that happened in the same year in which his father was died, which was two hundred and five years. Uh, uh, when he was 205 years old so we can we can determine the exact age from this and Abraham took Sarah uh, Sarai his wife this is before her name was changed as well um, and Lot and his, his brother's son and all their substance that they had gathered and the souls that they that they'd begotten in Iran and they went forth into the land of Canaan and into the land of Canaan they came and Abraham passed through the land in, unto the place of uh, Shechem, unto the plain of Mor Moriah, and the Can uh, Canaanite was then in the land. Okay, so now uh, all right, th I'm going to come back to this a little bit later. This is a, this is where Abraham actually departs. Now we know that he was 75, but I believe we can know exactly the um, the time of the year that this actually happened. Um, but anyway, it goes on to say that the Lord appeared to Abraham and said, Unto thee, uh, unto thy seed will I give this land. And there built here he an altar unto the Lord who appeared unto him. So th this, this, these are events now that happened. This would have happened, this appearing to him would have happened at, at Moriah, at a place where he built, uh, he built the altar there and he, and he entered into, uh, he made a promise to him. Um, and I believe, okay, I'm going to show you, and there's no way, I, I don't want to get ahead of myself here. Okay, so this is, um, we'll come back to this this verse now. So we, we know that Abraham uh, is now being called out for the second time, and he's 75, and his father was 205. So from a chronologi chronological perspective, okay, um, we can determine from Tehran's birth, we've already got the chronology up to Tehran's birth. We now know the age at which Abraham was born, uh, 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 the age at which Terah was when Abraham was born. So we can add the 130. So we now know when Abraham was born in two, 2008. Okay. And that was understanding clearly what the passages between 1132 to 12, uh, chapter 12, verse 4 uh, was telling us. This is the additional information that is provided to us so that we know that Abraham, that Terah wasn't only, it wasn't 70 when Abraham was born. He was, he was 100, it was 60 years later. Um, so this would kind of imply that he, there was quite a big age difference between Abraham and his, and his other brothers. 
and that is confirmed in 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 another so we learn that Sarah and Abraham were only 10 years apart um, it was uh, when we know that when Isaac was born we are told that Abraham was a hundred and Sarah was 90 so we know that they were only 10 years apart but we also know that Sarah uh, uh, and Abraham uh, well Sarah was Abraham's niece or in other words Sarah was Abraham's brother's daughter uh, um, so Haran's daughter was Sarah so Abraham married his niece or, or another way to put it with Sarah married her uncle uh, so this would imply that and, and there was only 10 years difference between them so there was so Abraham was substantially younger than his brother Haran in order for him to have married her, his, his brother's daughter and there only to be a 10 year difference okay so this this confirms the understanding that Abraham was born much later than what conventional thinking is okay so now he was he was born 60 years later in fact from conventional thinking in in two, 2008 years from uh, he was born 2008 years from 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 Adam so yeah, so that's so that's an, just an interesting um, piece of additional information that I want to, uh, and confirmation uh, uh, because now the Bible, st you know, the, the scriptures actually hang together. All right, and then um, as he goes into another comparative chronology between Shem and Abraham, and there's and he, and he goes into all the texts. I'm really not going to spend the time on that. It's it, it's a tremendous. There's some huge differences. I mean, yeah, just I'll just touch on it very briefly. Uh, the in, yes, the Hebrew texts. We are given those ages 35 30 34 30 these are the ages of the of the various patriarchs and at which the where their sons were born and gives us a total of 350 years uh, basically from from the time of the flood through to to um to abraham's birth on the in the septuagint it's, it's they add 100 years to each of those i mean now all of a sudden uh our fact set is 135 years uh, when when his son is born and uh, uh, Canaan is a hundred and thirty years uh, well there's additional it's just a additional person in the whole in the whole uh, chronology in, in, the, in the genealogy of this family uh, which came from, I don't know where it came from Sala is given another extra hundred years before his son is born and so it, it huge, ends in this huge number of 942 and the same thing has happened in the Samaritan text they probably were based on one another so huge discrepancies and it goes into a fair amount of detail on all of those um, which you welcome to to read through uh, but there's vast differences between those texts and the and the and the Hebrew Old Testament texts uh, and stuck strictly to the Hebrew Old Testament texts and and discarded all of these for the various reasons that he explained in in the book here okay so um, the next section that we need to cover is now from Abraham uh, th to, through to Joseph. Okay, uh, this this so this is, makes for some pretty interesting uh, reading. There's just one thing I wanted to just mention. Of course, what we have here in the chronology, if Abraham was born in uh, in in 2008, and he was 75 years when he departed from Haran. That means Abraham uh, went into the promised land at, in the year 2083. And there was recently a, 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 at the age 75. So there's some interesting connections there. Um, of course, uh, the church would say um, that that occurred in 2023. And there's a connection there between the 2003 that we're in at the 2023 we're in now. And if you take... What they believe to be his, his birth in at, at one uh, one thousand nine hundred forty eight years from Adam, add seventy five to that, and you get to two thousand and twenty three, uh, and they make all sorts of connections. Of course, the two thousand twenty three is wrong. It's supposed to be two thousand and eighty three. There's a sixty year error in their in their reckoning. Uh, just some inter an interesting sideline note on that particular thing. 
Okay, so just to get to just to understand what Anstey's thinking was, what his thinking pattern was, maybe we should just I'd just like to read this chapter a little bit. So he the, the he just goes on to say that the theme of the Old Testament is the purpose of God in redemption. Okay. The early chapters of Genesis, which deal with the creation of the world and the fall of man and the drug and the, and are introductory and, and preliminary. The first eleven chapters cover a period of time which is almost equal, exactly equal to that covered by the remainder of the whole Bible. So including the last book of the New Testament. It is a marvel of, of condensation. Uh, condensation. Its br brevity pr precludes the application of the argument uh, from silence. It is impossible to say that because things are not mentioned here that the author was not aware of them or that they did not exist. The plan of the writer is selective. The, hist uh, the, the history of these 2,000 years is little more than a geneal genealogical chart and that for the most part he traces only the, the one line of descent through Seth, uh, Noah, Abraham and of course to, it goes on through Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph etc. So the, the, the Bible is very economical in its in its rec record, it traces the genealogy and it gives the years and, and, and essentially the, the the Genesis is really a genealogical um, record with chronological information in it. And then of course there's a little bit of historical information that we can relate to as well. Okay, so that's the that's the mindset in which uh, Ensley was really uh, working with in, in his own mind. So he, he goes on to say, that the chronology of the remaining portion of Genesis is given in the same principles as that of the first 11 chapters. It follows that Abraham uh, through Isaac, Jacob and Joseph. Uh, so that's the line. He, he, so he, the Bible just sticks to that ge uh, that gene genealog genealogical line. Okay, It is uh, as it is with the anti-Diluvian or the pre-flood and the post-Diluvian patriarchs. Okay, so it, is with, uh, so it is with the Hebrew patriarchs. The method adopted for measuring the time is that of giving the age of the father at, uh, at the birth of the son until we reach the name of Joseph. And then it changes. And then the age of Jacob at the birth of Joseph is nowhere directly stated, in it, but it can be ascertained by an uh, uh, arithmetical uh, calculation or a historical induction. Okay. So g getting into the next section, we have to uh, just go back again to when Abraham was born, when Terah was 30 in the year 2008. So we're going to go, we're going to build on from there again. So we're going to build on from 2008 when Abraham was born. And we can add, we can add the 75 uh, years of age when he, that when he received his second call from God. Okay, so to, to leave Haran. Uh, so in other words, he left in 2083, not 2023. Okay, so in, he left immediately in obedience, and he he would he then um, he sojourned in Canaan in the land of Canaan for ten years before Hagar before he married Hagar. So we can add ten years to the 2083 is 2093, and Abraham would have been 85 then. When he married Hagar, uh, one year later Ishmael was born, so Abraham was 86. Uh, Ishmael was born in 2094, uh, one year plus the previous year, um, and then of course we know that from Genesis 21:5 uh, that uh, Isaac was born 14 years after Ishmael. So we can add 14 to that, and we get to the 2001:05. Uh, sorry, 2108, when Isaac was born and Abraham was 100. 86 plus the 14, 100 years old. Okay. Now, this part here, this adding on of the five years, which is the year, so in other words, what we, what Anthony is suggesting that Isaac was weaned at five years. It's not specifically, we're told that he's weaned, but we're not given his age. Now there is this does seem a rather um, old, uh, rather late weaning. Uh, I, I, my, I think most young children are weaned between two and three years, and it's not likely that they would go to five. I, 
this is this is the age at which uh, by 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 calculation it is determined that this is the age when I, when Isaac was weaned and became Abraham's heir. Um, the only thing that I can think that was he was not necessarily weaned of his mother at age five. It is very likely that that um, his mother being of old age, he was probably not breastfed. So I don't see him latching on to his mother at age five. But I think this is more about a point in, in time, a point in his life when he's now weaned and seen as um, no longer an infant or, uh, and he's now become a child, uh, whatever, and he's now the heir. Uh, because there's a, whole, there's a significance event uh, that actually is recorded to uh, uh, commence at this point in time. All right. Um, so we need to, there's a couple of things that we need to get, in. we're going to get into this 430 years, um, which was given to us that the people of, that Abraham was told that his people would sojourn for 430 years and that they'd be, suffer affliction during that time period. Later on, uh, we're told that his people, uh, at Isaac's weaning, he was, we're told that his seed would sojourn for 400 years. So, and, and, and for a long time, I've always wondered about this 430 versus 400, and I never really stood until uh, until I came across this uh, chronology, because this this sorts out all of those those issues. Because now we can see exactly uh, where the 430 years versus the 400 years fits in, and it's not a contradiction; it's just two but different points in time. And you will come to see that, in fact, what happens is that Isaac was weaned exactly 30 years after the first uh, in, uh, promise was given. When so the first 430 years. Um, was given was 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 when Abraham um, uh, was told was called for the second time, and we we're given to given that. And this is I just want to go into a little bit more detail on that because it's such an important thing. I think that and, and even for this time that we're in right now, uh, I think this is incredibly important that we need to just be aware of what actually happened here. So I'm going to go. Uh, it's, it's so let's just go to the Bible and have a look at. Uh, and there's a, this is the link between Genesis 12 and Exodus 12. So I'm going to just go to Exodus 12 um, so that I can... Um, and Exodus 12, 40, uh, or 41, somewhere around there. Okay. And, it's, it came, uh, this is, and it came to pass. Now this is, this is, at the, um, uh, this is obviously the, uh, the Exodus story. Okay. This is, they, they're actually now... Uh, uh, they started now. They they started. They left Egypt. They, um, so there's two connections here. Uh, it says now the sojourning of the children uh, who dwelt in Egypt was 430 years. Okay, the sojourning of the children of Israel, um, and this was immediately after they departed. Okay, so the the sojourning of the children who dwelt in Egypt was 430 years. And it came to pass at the end of the 430 years, even the self same day, it came to pass that all the hosts of the Lord went out from the land of Egypt. So in other words, the day that they left, 430 years were completed to the day. That's very important to take note of. So that means, and when, we've got, when we look at our chronology, we, we can see that this 430 years, in fact, began in Genesis 12, when Abraham was called out. And that's the beauty about putting a, a, a chronology together and putting it in a, tabli, a, tabli, t, t, uh, in a in a table format. Because we can see, when we get to the Exodus story, um, we we can actually go and determine exactly to the date we know that happening. We know the Exodus story happened in two two five one three, and if you deduct four hundred and thirty years, um, you will get to um, to where Abraham was called out for the first time. Two zero eight three. Okay. So 2083 plus 430 would be 
2513. So there's your 430 years. So we know, so we know that this um, calling out began the 430 years. Now we're told that to the day, in other words, this event, uh, this event in Genesis 12, when God said unto Abraham, get thee out of thy country, okay, which was the start of the 430 years to the day, means that Abraham departed as the Lord had spoken unto him, and Lot went with him, and Abraham was 75 years old when he departed out of Haran. It ha must have happened exactly on Passover. Abraham left Haran to go to the promised land at Passover. And he took his family with him. Just think about that for a moment. How the father of the seed that would bless the nations left for the promised land at Passover at the age of 75. Israel is about to turn 75 also right now. I believe the true Passover is coming up in just a few days time. We, lay, we see here in Genesis 12, 7 that the Lord appeared to Abraham and said unto, unto, unto thy seed will I give this land and there builded he, build he an altar unto the Lord who appeared unto him. This I believe happened a little bit later after he must remember he departed at Passover. Now he started his 430 years of sojourning. It also, the 430 years started with Abraham. The 400 years starts with Isaac. 30 years later, Isaac was weaned. So the 430 years starts with Abraham, and the 400 years starts with Isaac, but it started, the 430 years started at Passover, and this would have been a little bit later. He, wouldn't have, he would have got to the promised land. He got to Moriah. He got to Shechem, and he built an altar there, and I believe that happened exactly on the Feast of Weeks. Can't prove it. There's not enough information provided for us, but I believe that this was exactly on Feast of Weeks when Abraham did that. Later on, there are additional promises, and I mean, there's a, there's, um, uh, where is it, 13, 14, um, I just want to see if I can find it quickly, I think, uh, 15.3, this was the covenant, this was the covenant where um, this was this was before Ishmael was was born. This was he was still childless at this point in time, and God said to him that uh, um, that the word of the Lord came to him, and he said, "This shall not be thine heir." In other words, his, his servant would not be his heir, but he shall come forth out of thy own uh, bowels and shall be thine heir. Um, and and I, of course Abraham, uh, Abraham, Abram, he was still Abram at that point in time. He said, "How will I know this?" And then of course he was um, okay. Then at that point in time, the Lord says to him also, He says that uh, He said unto Abram, "Know for a surety, know for sure, that your seed will be strangers in a land that is not theirs, and shall serve them, and they shall afflict them four hundred years." Now this is not the beginning of the four hundred years, but He's just telling him that for sure your seed, your seed will be a stranger. So who's who's his seed? His seed was Isaac. So there's the 400 years beginning. So then, and then of course, um, he, he will punish that nation, etc. And it came to pass that when the sun went down, it was dark, and 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 behold, a smoking furnace and a burning lamp that passed between those pieces. Okay, this was now the actual covenant. Uh, in the same day, the Lord made a covenant with Abraham, saying, "Unto thy seed I have given this land." From the river Egypt unto the river uh, of the uh, of the river Euphrates. So, this covenant, uh, according to the uh, no, is it just uh, no? This one we also don't know exactly exactly which year it happened. We know it was before 
uh, he was 86, so sometime in that 10 year period between 75 and and 86, uh, because he had still had no children at this point, I was, uh, I was say 85 because he, you know, he hadn't, he had no children, well let's leave it at 86, because he had no children, he had no heir at this, at this point in time, but I believe, do believe that this covenant probably also occurred at the Feast of Weeks. Okay, there's another one where he changed his name from Abraham. Um, yeah, it was after the after Ishmael was born, and he changed his name. He said, "Now this now uh, Abraham was 90 years old. Uh, uh, you were sorry, 99 years old, uh, and Lord appeared unto him. Now Ishmael had already been born, so he was he was now 99, and said unto him, I am the Almighty God. Walk before me." And be thou perfect, I will make my covenant between me and thee, and will multiply thee exceedingly. And then he goes on to say, Neither shall thy name any more be Abram, Abr Abram, but it will be Abraham, for the father of many nations I have made thee. And he says, I will establish my covenant between thee and thy seed after thee in, the, in their generations for an everlasting covenant, uh, to be a God unto thee and unto thy seed for uh, seed after thee. And I will give unto thee and thy seed after thee the land wherein thou art a stranger and all the land of Canaan for an everlasting position and I will be their God. Now this where he changed his name in the Apocrypha tells us clearly, I'll just quickly go, I think I've got an extract. So in Jubilees 15.1 we're told that in the 50th year of the fourth week of this Jubilee in the third month, in the middle of the month. Abraham celebrates the feast of, of, of first fruits of the grains, that's Feast of Weeks, uh, and and it goes on to say um, that God came to him, that I just skipped out a few uh, verses there, but then it goes on, I, God came to him and he says, I am Yahweh, Almighty, approve thyself before you can see the same wording as in, the, in, in Genesis, uh, in in Genesis, approve thyself before me, and be you perfect, and I will make my covenant between me and you, and I will multiply you exceeding exactly the same words um, as Genesis. And Abraham fell on his face, and Yahweh maketh him, uh, talk, talketh with him, and said, Behold, my ordinance is with you, and you shall be the father of many nations, neither shall your name any more be Abraham, but your name uh, from henceforth, if, even forever, shall be Abraham. So this was the same event, and that occurred, occurred in the middle of the of the fifteen, of the middle of the third month, which would be the fifteenth, which would be feast of weeks, um, also, which is a uh, which is a first fruits uh, uh, feast. It's the first fruits of of wheat harvest. Um, we also know that Isaac. We just we'll see that later. But Isaac was also, according to the apocrypha, born in the middle of the sixth. Okay, um, well. Uh, just interesting, uh, Jubilee 16:12. In the middle of the sixth month, Yahweh visited Sarah, and did unto her as, you did, as she had spoken, and she conceived, and she bore a son in the third month, in the middle of the month, at the time of which Yahweh had spoken to Abraham in the festival of the first fruits of the harvest. Yitzhak, uh, Yitzhak or Isaac was born. So Isaac was born at feast of weeks, as well. And just note that uh, Sarah' visitation was in the sixth month. Remember the story in Luke. Uh, when did Gabriel come to Mary? In the sixth month. Okay. So they, there's there's no doubt in my mind that the type uh, of, uh, of Isaac is clearly connected um, to the, the the conception uh, and the birth of Jesus Christ, where Jesus would have been born at Feast of Weeks. And his conception would have occurred in the six months, probably the last day of the sixth month, maybe even just before uh, Feast of Trumpets, which is the first day of the seventh month. So, although this is, says middle of, it, I think there's some room for, I think it was closer to towards the end of the sixth six month. But there is clearly a connection between this visitation and the uh, Bible confirms all of this as well. Very interesting. Because it was just after this visitation in the um, that uh, Sodom was destroyed, so that means that Sodom was destroyed at the time of Feast of Trumpets as well. Uh, all right, so that's just a, a little bit of additional information. Uh, let's get back to um, okay. 
So uh, we we've got this um, the, the 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 five years uh, at which Isaac was um, weaned after he was born. So we've established that he was born in 2008, five years later, by means of calculation, and it's really a straightforward thing. We know that uh, 430 years from when Abraham uh, departed in 2083. Uh, when he departed Haran, uh, the 430 years begins and takes us through to the Exodus. And then backwards, we've got 400 years from uh, from the birth, from the weaning of, of. So we can go backwards. So we, we we basically take what he's done is he's taken 2083. That's when uh, uh, when uh, Abraham left Haran. Add the 430 years, we get to the time of the Exodus, 2513. And then you go backwards 400 years and you get to 2113 and that's when Isaac would have been weaned and there's a five year difference between 2113 and 2108. So that's so we can know that the Isaac was weaned five years after he was born. Okay. So that's what that was all about. So I need Isaac weaned and that becomes his seed. And then we add 32 years um, to get to when Sarah died at the age of 127. Interesting, she's the only woman in the entire Bible where we're given her age at her death and nobody else. Um, so anyway, how do we get this 32 years? Well, we get it from the from the information Sarah was 90 at the birth of Isaac. That's in Genesis 17, 7 and 21, 20, uh, 21 verse 5. And Sarah died at the age of 127. Um, so Isaac must have been 37 years old when Sarah died. Okay, but you've got to take off the five years. So 37 from when he was born to minus for five years, you've got to add the 32 years now to when he died. Okay, so I hope that you follow that. So it's 37 from when he was born, so it would be 32 from when he was weaned at, two, at five years age. So we add the 35, so we know exactly when Sarah died in 2.145. Later on in Genesis 5.20, we're told that uh, after three years, Isaac um, uh, married, uh, added three years to the marriage of Isaac at the age of 40. So Isaac married um, uh, uh, Rachel at 40 years, uh, uh, when he was 40 years old. And that happened three years Genesis 20, uh, 25 20 I think it tells us exactly that mm, no, no, just, just out of interest let's just go there Genesis 25 uh, uh, 25 20 and Isaac was 40 years old when he took it sorry it's not Rachel it's Rebecca <laughs> all these R's um, Isaac was 40 years old when Rebecca, when he took Rebecca to wife, uh, and um, yeah, so 40 years old is when Isaac. Um, so we we can go. Let's just go back to that chronology. Okay, so we know that it was he was 37 when Sarah died. So therefore, if he was 40 when he got married, he got married three years after Sarah died. Okay, so we add the three years, and he's now married, and. And 20 years to the birth of Esau, uh, add 20 years to the birth of of Esau and Jacob. All right, Genesis 20, uh, 25, 26. I'm not going to go through to each of these uh, scriptural references, but we, we're told, uh, you know, that he's, um, but let's just go, hang on, for this one. Um, 25, 26. And after, the, and after that came his brother out, and his hand took hold of, of Esau, Esau was healed and his name was called Jacob and Isaac was three score years old when she bare when she bare them. So Isaac was uh, 60 years old. So Isaac was 60. So from that, uh, if Isaac was 60 and we're going to duck the 40 years when Isaac was married, so it's 20 years we've got to add on. So 20 add 20 years to the from when he was married to when they were born and we get 2168 and then of course we've got to add 15 years to the add 15 years to the death of Abraham at the age of 175 so Genesis 25 7 given his age we can we know exactly when Abraham was born 
uh, so add 175 and the difference is 15 so we know that in 2183 uh, 75 175 years from 2008 would be when Abraham died so 2008 plus the same drive 2183 okay that is straightforward 15 year difference between uh, when Esau and Jacob were born to to when Abraham died okay and then we got 25 years to the marriage of Esau at age 40 so Esau marriage uh, 25 years later um, so it's Esau and Jacob at the same age but Isaac was 40 when he got married but his, his son Esau also got married when he was 40 so we can uh, so from the time when Esau was born 2186 add 40 to that um, we know that that Esau married at uh, in the year 2208 and the difference between those two would be 25 years okay so so these are all mathematical uh, calculations that we can that we can and we can that we can determine exact years very very accurately from scripture when we piece these pieces together okay um, so it's 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 just it's amazing how this thing all comes together and you just if you just work through it method use a methodology to the whole system it all all works out um, so just pressing on with that so we've got Esau now we at uh, 2208 we know that Esau got married at age 40 and then we got to add 37 years to the day that Jacob left home now how do we get we know that Jacob left home at age 77 now, that Bible doesn't tell us that okay we have to determine that and this is the section from here to here that shows us how we deter determine that that Jacob was 77 years of age when he left home, um, which would have been 37 years after Esau got married. Uh, Jacob and Esau being the same age. So Joseph stood before Pharaoh at age 30. Now this is the determining of the 77. Okay, Joseph. We know that from Genesis 41, 46 that Joseph stood before Pharaoh at age 30. We know that uh, at the end of seven years of, of plenty, Joseph was 37. Okay. At the end of two years of famine, Jacob came down into Egypt. We told that in Genesis 45:6. So therefore, Joseph would have been 39 when, when Jacob came down. Okay. Uh, then at the end of at the same time, at the, we're also told that at the end of two years of famine, when Jacob came down, we are told in Genesis 40. 47 9 that Jacob was hundred and thirty years old now there's the connection so now we've got a connection we know exactly when we already determined when Jacob was born and we're told that he's hundred and thirty years when when Joseph was 39 we now got a, a connection in the chronology so therefore uh, Jacob was 130 when Joseph was 39 and therefore Jacob was 91 when Joseph was born okay Jacob has, uh, uh, we know that Jacob served Laban for 14 years when Joseph was born. So he worked seven years, then he got his wives, and then another seven years later, Joseph was born. 14 years. Add the 14 years to the, uh, sorry, deduct the 14 years from when Joseph was born. We know that uh, 14 years before Joseph was born is when when uh, Jacob left home and went to 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 live uh, to work for Laban and that would have been at age 77 so now we've got the, this the age at which Jacob left and we know that uh, f 30, uh, uh, there's a f you deduct the 40 years from that we can actually we, ne we now know that it was 37 years after Esau got married at the age of 40 that Jacob left home 37 so we can add the 37 and so Jacob left home in 2245 and now we can just continue with that <laughs> and you can just add all those numbers back in again and we can uh, we'll see how this whole thing we can get to joseph's um uh, the, we'll complete the chronology so let's just continue with that so we add the seven years um so he says he, he left home so then seven years later he, he uh, jacob uh, to jacob's marriage to jacob married both leah and rachel at the same time and then he served another, he served seven years uh, for Leah before his marriage and then another seven for Rachel after it okay so we add the seven years up to Leah 
uh, when he, and then he got his uh, Rachel immediately after, and then another seven years. Um, so, um, so okay, let's just add up the first. So seventy-seven. So plus he was seventy-seven when he left, and seven years later he was eighty-four. So he was eighty-four years old when he got married to Leah and Rachel. Okay, then seven years working for for Rachel, uh, and he and then Joseph was born in uh, seven years later. So we know that. Joseph was born in 2259. You just add, add the seven years to that. So we've got the year exactly when Joseph was born. We already determined that Jacob was 91 at that point in time. And then six years later, there was a uh, case. Okay, so Jacob worked six more years after having worked his time for, for Rachel. He worked another s uh, six years for the cattle. And then he returned, so we can add the six years to the 91. So he returned to Canaan at uh, 70, uh, at 97. That was Genesis 31, uh, 41. So at that point, Joseph was age six when uh, Jacob returned to Canaan at, at age 97. So we add the six years to, Joseph, to when Joseph was born. He's now six years old. And then we can add another 24 years to the time when Joseph stood before Pharaoh because we know that Joseph stood before Pharaoh at age 30. Uh, he, uh, so minus the six years. So there's 24 years difference between uh, when uh, Jacob left to return to Canaan and the time when, Pharaoh, when Joseph stood before Pharaoh. So we add the 24 years. We now know exactly when uh, Joseph stood before Pharaoh and the beginning of the seven years of plenty so at age 30 so we can add the seven years of plenty and then the seven years of plenty Joseph was 37 and add another two years when Jacob went down to Egypt um, so we, can, we get to 2298 that's when Jacob went down to Egypt and in the same year Joseph was 39 and Jacob was 30 we already determined that okay and we then 17 add 17 years to the death of Jacob we're told that straightforward you can go read it in Genesis um, uh, 47 28 we're told that Jacob uh, remained in Egypt 17 years and that he was uh, 147 years old when he died so we add the 17 years so Jacob died at 147 so when you can go back you can just confirm all of that from from his birth to plus 147 brings us exactly to the same year so there's a there's a nice uh, double confirmation for us that we all these other calculations are spot on there's no error beautiful double uh, double confirmation for us in that uh, in in Jacob's age which is given to us in the Bible um, maybe I should just show you so it's, you can see there's not a calculated age Genesis uh, uh, 47 28 let's go there uh, Genesis 47 28 and Jacob lived in the land of the age of 70 years so the whole of the age of Jacob was 147 years beautiful wow man I tell you God is good and how does how anybody doesn't get excited about this stuff I don't know <laughs> this is just it's just beautiful way I mean we've got all those intricate calculations to determine all of these ages and all these years and we come back here and then we can do a double verification based on Jacob's age I mean come on uh, anyway so then we just press on um, then we add another 54 years to the death of Joseph and um, uh, Joseph died we are told in Genesis I uh, uh, 50 26 that Joseph died at the age of 110 so we re we know when Joseph was born so we can calculate the, the year of his death and we can see that the difference is 54 years and that brings us to the end of the Joseph um, age and that's it's just I don't know I just step back and I say thank you Lord um, it's just a marvelous piece of work it's just a marvelous and it just confirms for me that every everything in the Bible is still intact. Um, it's just wonderful, man. Um, this is so exciting to see, and I can see that by what Anstey wrote in this, in he was he was he was just as just as much he, um, excited about it. He says each step in the process of this of the chronology is clearly explained in the above table, and the proof 
And he goes, he emphasizes the proof <laughs> is given in the testimony of the text of the scriptures, scriptures um, cited. These proof texts are the historical data with which the science of chronology is built up. He was so passionate about this. Unbelievable. Okay. Um, we're getting on to the next. Okay. The th we need to just. Okay. This is just a recap on the, 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 three, the 430 years. Um, he ends to cover it as well. I have already. So just uh, he picked up that uh, from Exodus 12 41. Now this, that the that was um, uh, where the 140 years is given from the self same day in which they left was 430 years earlier is when I, I mean, when um, when Abraham uh, departed from Haran to the promised land as well. Okay. And then, of course, there's the the four hundred. Uh, then uh, the covenant that was confirmed by God in Christ and the law, which is four hundred thirty years after, cannot be uh, uh, cannot disannul. This sojourn includes the whole period uh, from the call of Abraham in twelve one, and the promise in twelve three, and the confirmation of the promise by covenant in fifteen thirteen to eighteen. To the going up out of Egypt within two with, within two months of which the law was given in Sinai. So you know there's two months from them exiting Egypt to reach, coming to Sinai in the third month. <coughs> um, so from the middle of the first month to the middle of the third month is two months, and that's the completion of the 140 years to the day at Feast of Weeks. Um, so yeah. Another reason, actually, why I believe that um, because the law was given at the middle of the third month, I believe that was also exactly uh, 143 years to the day from when the Lord gave uh, entered into a covenant also in, 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 in 12. Uh, just to get back to that, that was Genesis 12, where I said that he built the altar. I believe they built the altar in the middle of the third month. And 140 years to the day later is when they arrived at Mount Sinai and the Lord appeared to them. Uh, okay, and then, all right, he just shows the calculation, straightforward stuff. And then, of course, the 400 years. Um, yeah, I've already covered this, you know, of a surety that, that thy seed will be a stranger. And it was also confirmed in Stephen in Acts 7 6. I didn't go to it, but here it is. Yeah, Stephen's speech. And God spake on, on, on this wise that his seed would sojourn in a strange land, and they, uh, they should bring them into bondage and entreat them evil 400 years. Okay, so that's where the 400 and relates to it. Okay, then Anstey goes into some calculations on the 400 years. Um, there's just one typo. Yeah, this should read 185, not 815. So if you take 100, uh, 185 plus the 215, you get to 400 years. And he just gives a breakdown of all that. Um, I'm not going to go into too much. It's, it's interesting if you can go if you want to go and read into it because the, the uh, uh, but I think there's a table here that shows it maybe a little bit nicer. So from the the call and promise to Abraham, then ten years later was with Hagar. He married Hagar. One year later, Ishmael born. Fourteen years later, Ish, uh, Isaac born. Five years later, Isaac weaned, and that totals. Uh, so and then okay and then from the weaning of Isaac, uh, when he became the seed, to the going out into Egypt was 185 years. So he's, we've done there was a calculation. He's already shown it in Abia. Remember I said to you there that should read 185. It's a typo. Um, so 185. Interesting. When you add these numbers, it comes to exactly 215 years. So in other words, from when they went down uh, from Abraham's first second call out of Haran to them going to Jacob going down to Egypt was exactly 215 years exactly halfway through the 430 years to when Jacob went down into Egypt and exactly they were in Egypt for exactly 215 years 
So from the time that Jacob went into Egypt to the time of the Exodus was 250 years, exactly the other half of the 430 years. I mean, you know, there's no manipulation here. This is exactly, God knew exactly what he was doing. Everything is timed perfectly. Um, this is no, these are not accidental numbers that come together. Okay. All right, he goes into some detail about the 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 weaning and the determining of the dates okay then this is non chronological information it goes into the debate about the number of uh, you know there's a fair amount of debate as to how the, the number of people that went down with jacob and all that kind of thing i'm not going to go into any of that stuff you can if anybody's interested they can pick up they calculates all the how they got to the 75 <coughs> and um, 75 people that is that went down with including Jacob to into Egypt um, so that's all broken down there's some more stuff and then of course the ages of Jacob and his descendants when Jacob came out came into Egypt there was all, it's quite a lot of information here it's really quite intense stuff so let's I, I just want to focus more on the chronological aspects um, that are contained within the book okay we're coming close to this is the final stage okay the joseph moses connection and i said i would uh, deal with two connections the one was tehran uh, abraham connection and the next one now is the joseph moses connection in other words we are not told exactly how many years after joseph died that moses was born so there's a it's a new period and that's what basically Anstey goes into. You know, he says that so the book of Genesis closes with the death of Joseph at the age of 110. And, and there the patriarchal chronology comes to an end and it ends in a cul-de-sac. In other words, it's a dead end. We can go no further um, on that timeline. Um, and for, uh, for the age of Joseph at the, at the, at the birth of, of Ephraim, as the birth of Ephraim and Manasseh, are not stated okay so we can't find out the uh, genealogy in any way because there's no information on it okay but the exact point at which the chronology and the continuity of the narrative commences is the birth of moses that's so we we can there's plenty of chronological information from 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 moses onwards the problem is that we need to bridge uh, and how to bridge the gulf and how to determine the exact number of years between the death of joseph and the birth of moses and this thing, then he goes on to explain exactly how that's achieved. Now we know that from the call of Abraham to the death of Joseph was uh, from Anon 2083. So from his call in 2083 to the to the death of Joseph in 23, it was a period of 286 years. And we know that from the um, from the birth of Moses to the Exodus was a period of 80 years. In other words, Moses was 80 years old when they exited at the time of the exodus he was uh, 40 years later when he died he was 120. so that's all given to us in those scriptures there and if we add these numbers the 286 plus we get to 366 years and we subtract them then from the sum of the number of years in the entire period in other words from the 430 we come to a total of 64 years between the death of joseph and the birth of Moses beautiful so that's the exact period between those two and then he goes on to say that there is um, no uh, uh, just had to rub it in eh? <laughs> he says there is here no appeal to Josephus no speculative hypothesis no assumptions no conjecture uh, the result is obtained by historical induction from the facts and figures given to us in the text itself and is mathematically exact. Okay, so we've now got that information given to us in detail. So he's basically taking the 430 years, he's deducting the from call to Joseph the 286 and we get left with 144. Then he deducts the 40 years uh, to the flight of Moses, uh, to, from from the flight of Moses, Exodus was 40 years. He did like that. So the death of Joseph to the flight of Moses was uh, left. We left over the 104, and then 
um, the birth of Moses to the flight of Moses out of Egypt, you know, was 40 years. So he was 40 years old when he, when he, when he, um, when he, after he, when he killed the Egyptian and then f um, he, he fled out of Egypt for 40 years. So we deduct that and we're left with 64. So it's just another way of determining exactly the same number in greater detail. All right. Um, then we got the, another section where he does some comparative chronology with other texts, etc. And I'm again, I'm not going to go into detail. Uh, on if you want to spend time, uh, there's a ton of information in there. Um, so if you want to go get, you know, download the book and read that section. Um, so I want to get to the last section now, Joseph, Moses connection. Okay, we've got that, sorry. Uh, then we've got this, okay, this is just a diagram of exactly the same thing. So it's just given it in diagrammatical form. Uh, so let's start at the bottom, the 430 years from Abraham's call to the Exodus, 400 years from Isaac's weaning to the Exodus, 215 years from uh Okay, there, there was a there, there, there's a in the Josephus and the Sumerian version they also have 215 years. Uh, he, he discusses that in greater detail in those comparisons, and this is the time. In other words, the children of Israel were in Egypt for 215 years, and they were 215 years also in a in in a land that they were sojourning in a land that didn't belong to them, not in Canaan for 215 years. Of which 30 years was uh, Abraham's portion and then 160, uh, 185 years off the Abraham to, to Jacob's going down to Egypt. So it's just a graphical representation of what we've already covered. Um, okay, just, um, so I think that, that pretty much brings us to the end of the, the, the chronology that I want to cover in the book uh, for this video. Um, in the next video, I'm going to go through the theocracy, the period of the judges. Um, so basically from the Exodus uh, onwards um, to the kings. And we'll cover the kings as well. And we'll go into detail on how Israel counted the, the years for their kings uh, versus uh, uh, Judah. Uh, counted the the years ascribed, and we'll go. Uh, Anstey does a fantastic job of deciphering that those differences, and uh, so yeah, it wasn't a recent discovery. It was actually discovered 110 years ago already, correctly discovered and correctly documented. Uh, there is a version today that they completely messed it up, um, but Anstey's got it down, and we'll definitely. It's very exciting to see all of that. So we'll cover that in detail in the next video. And that will probably be the last part um, of the of this uh, biblical chronology. So I hope that's um, that's of some interest to 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 you guys. I hope you guys find it interesting. I certainly find it very encouraging um, to see it uh, in in black and white and to see how the numbers all hang together and how accurate the, the biblical chronology really is and we really need to, to go nowhere else uh, for a true understanding of exactly the timing of events and I just thank you Lord for providing that for us and, and I thank the Lord for, for bringing people like Martin Anstey to the point where he spent the time and effort uh, to put this whole thing together so um, and it's just a small part that I'd like to play and bring it uh, to to more people's attention because unfortunately um, the church has completely missed it. Okay, until the next video, I'm going to sign out. <laughs>